Hello everyone. It's been over a week since we received news that Govia was to be stripped of the Southeastern franchise by the government. I thought that I would do a follow up to my previous video because I had been asked many questions over the last few days regarding this. Therefore, here is a question and answer video to guide you through what we know so far and what we have learnt since the news broke. Before we begin, if you like what you see here, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It goes a long way to support the Bokwa Park Miniature Railway. Govia are a joint venture between UK transport firm Go Ahead and French transport firm Keolis. The Go Ahead group were established in 1986 from the deregulation of the bus industry, mainly running private bus operations in the northeast of England to begin with. When the railways were privatised, Go Ahead had a 65% share in a company called Victory Rail Holdings, which operated the Thames Trains franchise from October 1996 with Go Ahead taking over the remaining 35% of the company in June 1998 from a group made up of ex-British Rail managers. Go Ahead then formed a joint venture with Colas named Govia, which went on to bid for and win the Thameslink franchise which started in March 1997, the South Central franchise in August 2001, the South Eastern and London Midland franchises in November 2007, and finally, the Thameslink Southern and Great Northern franchise in September 2014. In the past, Govia was unsuccessful in bidding for the Regional Railways Northwest, Scotrail, Northern, and Trans Pennine Express franchises. Kirillus, which makes up 35% of Govia, is a French transport company based in Paris, with 70% being owned by the French state railway company SNCF and the remaining 30% owned by a Canadian pension fund. Keolis operate a number of transport networks within many French cities, whilst their other international interests include bus services in Sweden, Netherlands and the US, commuter trains in Boston, USA, as well as metro and tram systems in Australia and China. Here in the UK, they also have a joint venture with UK construction company Amy to run the Dockers Light Railway in London, as well as the Manchester Metrolink. Govia's only remaining franchise after the 16th of October 2021 will be the Thameslink Southern and Great Northern franchise. Govia operates this as the Govia Thameslink Railway, or GTR for short, and is expected to continue until March 2022. As reported in the news last week, the government stripped Govia of the South Eastern franchise as it had breached its franchise agreement by hanging on to £25 million of taxpayer funding, which should have been paid back. Although the money was eventually recovered, the government decided to strip Govia of the franchise after a serious breach of good faith. Franchises had been stripped from or had been given up in the past. For example, Connix was stripped of its South Eastern franchise in 2003 due to poor financial mismanagement. More recently, Virgin East Coast gave up the LNER franchise in 2018, citing financial difficulties, which in reality, they weren't making enough money. Arriva's poor performance in running Northern lost them that franchise in January 2020. Whilst in Wales, the same happened to Keolis Amy when Transport for Wales took over the Wales and Borders franchise in February 2021. The collapse in passenger numbers after the pandemic was to blame for this. The Department of Transport and the train operating company seemed to differ of their version of events. According to South Eastern, this had all been a big misunderstanding with a technical note buried into last year's accounts, warning shareholders that outflow of resources could be in the region of £8 million. A little underestimate, but the language seems to suggest that management appeared to be unaware of the problems mounting. Southeastern has since apologised and admitted its error, paid back the money and accepted the resignation of its finance director. The Department for Transport didn't agree with this, 
and in a statement has said that the underpayment to be a significant breach of the good faith obligation within the franchise agreement. The government also added that it would consider further options for enforcement action, including fines. It is not known if the government will follow through with this threat or leave it as a warning to other rail operators. But how could South Eastern misplace £25 million? The rail franchising system implemented by the government during the 1990s is a very complicated process with contracts formalising relationships between the government, operators and infrastructure agencies including Network Rail as well as many others. These contracts can run into hundreds and thousands of pages and can cost in excess of £10 million for each company to bid. With South Eastern's case, there was a further complication, the high speed line. From what we know so far, this is what may have gone wrong, but we can't be certain. In order for South Eastern to run its class 395 javelins on the route, they would have to pay track access charges for the privilege. In fact, most, if not all trains pay this charge to run on a national network. Normally, this would be included in the agreements with Network Rail, as it is between them and most other train operating companies. However, the high-speed line isn't managed by Network Rail, but instead a private company called HS1 Limited. Therefore, a special arrangement was set up in which the government pays the favourable access fee up front and expects any unspent money to be paid back. It was this discrepancy that laid unnoticed for seven years. This is uncertain but unlikely. The government are moving towards a different system away from the original franchise agreements. In future, a new state agency, Great British Railways, will simply tell new operators how many trains to run and pay them a fee to do so. With the promise of simpler contracts, it is hoped that this sort of discrepancy may be avoided in the future. As from the 17th of October 2021, an operator of last resort will take over, the public operator known as SE Trains. Very little is known at this time on what they have planned. I would expect them to continue as South Eastern did with very little change. If anything, staff and passengers will see no difference at all. What we do know is that the remainder of the 30 Class 707s will continue to transfer from South Western Railway, while some Class 465s and 466s will continue to move away for storage despite still being on lease. It's not impossible, but still too early to tell. It's common knowledge that Transport for London has wanted to operate the South Eastern Metro routes for some time now, but usually, due to political indifference, this has never happened. With the concept of Great British Railways on the way, we may see the entire UK franchise map redrawn at some point, but who knows. At the moment, unlikely. There have been calls from the media, unions and politicians alike to strip Govia of its Thameslink Southern and Great Northern franchises because of this situation. The Govia Thameslink Railway, as it is referred to by Govia, is due to end in March 2022, and with less than six months remaining from the time of this video being recorded, I would expect GTR to carry on until then. Political winds can change very quickly, so we'll see what happens. That's all for now. Thank you for watching and I look forward to reading your comments below. Many thanks and goodbye.